Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Strife Sanctum. My name is Citizen Strife, and this week we're continuing on with Mega May. I'm doing this a, little, a few extra days before I go on vacation, so I've uploaded a ton of stuff for both this and my gameplay channel. But um, I've followed along from Mega Man 1, Mega Man X2, and this week it's going to be something I have less experience with, but was also an, a nice change of pace. And this week I'm going to talk about Mega Man Legends. Mega Man Legends was a game released back in the PS1 era. It was also ported to the N, uh, N64 later in its life cycle. Um, but the best way I would describe this is a Mega Man game mixed with a Tomb Raider game but a lot less finicky and a lot more lighthearted. Um, it still has a lot of the conventions that you would find in a Mega Man game. The character Mega Man, Roll, a lot of the, a lot of the names of the weapons and things, but it's not strictly following the same canon. It's not strictly following the same structure. It's also done in 3D. So they went for a completely different experience, and I don't know if I would consider this, like, the best game one would ever play, but it's certainly different enough, and it has a few charms to it, namely, namely in its uh, supporting cast. And some of the things that you can do around the main town. And um, the biggest thing is you have to kind of know what you're in for, so if you like the grittiness of Mega Man X, you're not going to find it here. If you like the kittiness of, say, Mega Man 7, which I feel is a little more straightforward in how it's geared towards kids, this is kind of that thing. This is like Saturday morning anime or Pokemon level intensity it is not meant to be taken seriously they themselves do not take it seriously in terms of how they structure the story and the characters and it's not meant to be this life-changing thing but they still show enough fun for the concept that it has its moments and if you can get past some of the weird wonky design choices and, you know, some of the iffy voice acting and here and there, you're going to find some things that you're going to like. And I know for me, I found a couple of characters specifically that I liked and mind the construction because, of course, they can't they cannot uh, value a person's time in an apartment building because they've been working on construction for two months. Anyway, we'll get started. Um, and... When I'm starting, we'll start with plot, and it's it's an interesting one, if nothing else. Their world is divided into diggers and spotters. The idea with diggers is they are spelunkers. They try to find new technology, mainly refractors, these crystals that look like the Final Fantasy crystal things. Uh, they power technology that you can fly, you can you know, do other things in your world and do all the other fun, cool stuff. Along with the diggers, you have spotters, which are kind of your support characters that see where you're going and make sure you don't cause any stupid shit to happen. The diggers and spotters have been her hearing of this thing known as the Motherload on this island. I believe it's called Catalog Island. Forgive the pronunciation. But... The Mother Lode is supposed to be this insane treasure. So it's one of those MacGuffin stories. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what kind of treasure it can be. But the idea tends to be this, this insanely powerful perpetual energy machine in the shape of a refractor. That's the general gist of what most people assume. So Mega Man Volnut, yes, he has a last name for some reason, and Roll Casket. They are not related to the original Me uh, Mega Man and Roll, but they're their own characters. I forget if they're human or if they're robotic. Um, it it's kind of weird how how these games how these games kind of work because it's some people are humans, some people are robotic, and and it's just how. It is. I'm going to assume they're human, and if I'm wrong, then it is. But they, they act pretty human, and they do nice things, and they're just nice people. They're with their uh, 
the rest of their cruel, their cruel crew, uh, Barrel Casket, who I believe is Roll's grandpa, and Data, who's a monkey. And he's a monkey, and he dances, and he's a monkey. Um, so they're on a trip to Kettlock Island, or just wandering around doing missions for a little while, and then they basically just run afoul. Their engine gets screwed over, and they crash land into Kettlock Island. And this big city, and this big ruin, you know, it's all kind of self-contained in this one area, so there's not a lot of island-hopping kind of vibe in this. But... They happen upon the city, the main hub known as Apple Market, and they have their own, you know, cops, they have their own library, they're, you know, um, all the manner of things, a nice shopping mall, all the normal things you'd find in this, but they're also being accosted by pirates, because they're also looking for the fun thing. And these pirates are the best thing about this game, because they are the Bonds. Um, my favorite character in this game is Teasel. And he's just this this frantic sounding guy. He's he just has a has an air about him that he's charismatic as hell. He he is willing to admit defeat, but only in the sense that he's always got the upper hand. Because if is if he's still standing, he's gonna keep on fighting. And that's this is infectious charisma that makes you like him because he's just. Owning the scenery, especially for a game like this where the writing isn't all that great, he really owns the screen all the time. So you end up kind of fighting him sometimes, and then you don't fight him, and then he's somewhat helpful, but then he doesn't help you. It's kind of like the Risky Boot Shante thing, where sometimes they'll help each other, but they're doing it for ulterior motives kind of thing. But Risky Boots is more antagonistic about it. Teasel is more, ah, you beat me, that's fine, I'll live. Let's go have some pizza. Um, His sister i believe is tron bond and she ended up being kind of the standout character of this and honestly i think teasel would have been but tron bond is fine um her whole thing is that she helps create most of the technology that teasel and the others use they they also have a brother named babu who just goes babu you know what he's just there it's kind of like data he's just going babu you know and serve bots who serve tron um and they're always like little annoyances they're kind of like minions they just do tron's bidding and tron is always kind of running around doing stuff and she's kind of the main antagonist i guess but like Mega Man saves her from getting bit by a dog for some reason and then she gets conflicted and she has emotions and they, they don't act on it but you know because this is a kids game i think if they dug deeper like you know you could see them being like oh well i mean Mega Man's nice to everybody so he doesn't think anything of it she's just like i just want you to be i just want to be better than you i'm your rival you know because she hates getting beaten um so she ended up getting her own spin-off game and whatnot as a prequel uh, uh it was called the misadventures of tron bond but of the two, I think Teasel was the one that I gravitated to the most. I think Tron just kind of, she doesn't change much. She does her thing of, you know, helping Teasel out and, you know, liking Mega Man, but not liking Mega Man. And it's will she, won't she kind of bullcrap. And then they're, you know, on friendly-ish terms. There's no, like, love triangle crap between her and Roll, if you're wondering, you know, because it's not that type of game, which I guess is, is fine to be fair um because again i don't know if mega man and roll are sisters or you know brother and sister or if they're just friends or if there's anything more i mean you can give roll gifts but i don't think they go any further than that so it's kind of nice as a refreshing change of pace to not have that but there is an arc there that maybe mega man legends 2 does fall into that I didn't see because I'm only focusing on the first game. But these characters are good for what they are. Mega Man's nice. Roll is nice. She's basically Tails, but not stupid, you know, and annoying. But not in the Roll is almost always the annoying sidekick character, which I think she gets a bad rap most of the time. I mean, she's inoffensive, so, yeah. Anyway, but you get through that, you get to the what I guess would be considered the battle system, because there's not really a battle system. You know, I'm using that terminology because I focus mostly on JRPGs, but the idea here is it is a lot of running and shooting, but in a 3D plane. A lot of circle strafing and shooting to avoid projectiles and missiles and other stuff. 
a lot more hectic fights. You could do a lot of, um, cause there are enemies that are either run and, you know, hit you with bombs or some that try to smack you with stuff. There are dungeons littered with traps on occasion. So there's a, a few fair bits of minor platforming that aren't in the egregious, you know, this is still early on in the life cycle of things, but, um, it's still not so bad that you're, frustrated with the jumps and all that stuff it's only when you're in a battle there there are some unique boss fights like you're protecting roll while you're both on a boat or you're protecting roll while you're in the flutter which is their airship um there's other cool stuff like you're chasing things down there's a couple of side quests about races or you know helping people out in the city you're solving some mysteries you're dungeon diving you're doing a lot of cool stuff and you get a lot of gear that kind of messes around with the with the formula a little bit so you get a lot of money and you get to upgrade you get to upgrade equipment quite a bit so you can either improve your uh, damage output you can improve your range throughout the screen you could do more rapid fire or you could do energy which is quicker bursts before you run out um and you get all these chips and customization options, you know, extra arms. You get these sub weapons. Uh, you vacuum arm to vacuum up some other things. You got grenade launchers, bombs, laser beams, all that fun junk. And it's a cool idea. But the Buster can suffice if you power it up well enough. But it is cool that they did add a lot of uniqueness to a system that they could have kind of went bare bones with. So I give them credit for doing that. And speaking on the side questing a little bit more, because this isn't the longest game. You go through the story and you go through a lot of the stuff in about 8 to 12 hours, if that. Because um, the story is you kind of keep digging through the area and kind of unlocking areas. And you go through a gate and you find the, the final boss who, again, I don't know if they planned the second game before this. Um but it really does kind of show that there is just few things to do, but you do get time to open up side quests here and there. I think one of the coolest aspects I remember was seeing how if you wanted to, you could actually steal the money that you're supposed to give back to the police and to the other people. You could actually kick people or do dastardly things or shoot people and Mega Man would actually lose um favor with the with the townsfolk that he's supposed to help and his suit will get darker if you be too much of a derp do be too much of a derp and they'll actually antagonize you i think it affects where you can shop so it's kind of like link's awakening where if you steal from the main shopkeeper he'll kill you and then he won't sell you anything ever again that sort of thing um that's a neat mechanic so there are a few nice things about Mega Man legends i think in the, the sequel or in the in the prequel the tron bond one they'll probably advance it but that'll be a story for another day as far as the entire package goes the music is inoffensive the voice acting is eh, you know saturday morning anime kind of you know kind of junk Mega Man's never been the best when it comes to the to voice acting so don't expect anything amazing here but it's it's fine um the music is fine again there's not anything to write home about really this game is sold on the characters and the gameplay and the fact that the bonds specifically de Tiesel, which i keep wanting to say diesel for some reason Tiesel is just a presence whenever he's on screen things liven up and it starts to be a much better thing as far as negatives go uh the villain just kind of shows up out of nowhere and is there just to give you a final boss. He's nondescript, and that's kind of the mode. Um, again, the voice acting is not up to snuff, so bear in mind that this was still back in kind of that era where you could either get Metal Gear Solid or you could get random saturday morning anime junk you know and this is on the on tier of random anime junk it's fine but it's not gonna win any awards but you could probably get away with it uh, um but as stated having a few side quests in as short as a game as like this was it was a nice feature knowing that you can kind of customize and work your way through with other with whatever options you had and the platforming isn't too strenuous 
it's a nice introduction to those early 3D platformers without being particularly bad at it. Like, Mega Man can still kind of hook himself and climb to a wall, even if he's falling, so it's not like if you miss a jump, you're completely screwed. Um, the dark Mega Man idea is a nice touch, being able to kind of screw with the side quests, even though there's not that many. But again, really, the bonds carry this. Mega Man and Roll are fine. Some of the side characters are there, but really the bonds are your main foils. They're petty rival pirates, but they're never like truly main villains. So you kind of get to root for them after a while. And you kind of think, I want to be with these people more than Mega Man, which is kind of nice because that's why they made a second game with a, with a spinoff. And they were like, oh, I get to see more Tron Bon. I get to see more Serve Bots. I get to see more Babu. And I would imagine more Teasel. And that's good enough for me. So if you're looking for a game that wasn't like the biggest thing ever, but was still well liked for what it was, I'd say Mega Man Legends fits the bill. It's that early 3D game that isn't so bad that it can't be playable you know, because there was that rough patch where games like that had a lot of growing pains. But for for a series that primarily stuck to 2D and then went on to 3D with bleh, um, success in Mega Man X7, I would say this was a decent attempt at something different. But that will do it for me this week. And that was Mega Man Legends. So we'll finish up Mega May next week with... Mega Man Battle Network. And that one is an interesting side questy kind of thing. And, you know, another spin-off, this time for the GBA. And, you know, it's got some cool ideas in it. For being a game that is trying to be a grid-based shooter and puzzle game as opposed to a, like a typical RPG you know, or even a typical Mega Man game. And it still has a lot of that, you know, kid-friendly vibe to it. But it's still got its moments, I think. Um, once we get done with that, we're done with Mega May, And it will be my dress-up darling, Legend of Lagaya, Chobit, and the 100th episode. I won't talk about the 100th episode and reveal it until um, the Legend of Lagaya episode is ready up because that's in june um so i've got a few weeks to kill but if you like this one or like any of of my other podcasts feel free to let me know and as always like share and subscribe um but thank you guys so much for watching this even if it's only one time because i've been doing this for almost two years now and whether it's the gaming stuff that i do a lot of the time or this the side project podcasting that i do for the games and the anime reviews I do what I can for fun, and I think that's important. So if you guys have been enjoying this, please let me know, and please let me know what I could do better, um, provided that I can help it. I know the volume thing a while back is something I've definitely fixed, so hopefully that's been less of an issue lately. But anyway, that's just me spitballing near the end of this episode. So I'll see you guys next time. Citizen Strive, signing off.